Welcome to To Enable. This video is going to show how to set up um, classrooms and a virtual classroom for teachers and how the platform itself can be used to assist in learning and teaching. To Enable is hosted at www.toenable.org, so users need to visit that website in order to register. And once they register, they can then enroll in specific subjects. So typically when you first land on the home page, you will see choose subject and progress and results. And you will not see any of the subjects in which you've enrolled in because users decide choose which subjects they want to enroll in. What's important is there is a to enable help subject, which will allow you to access help videos. But typically users, and these are teachers and students, because teachers can use these resources in their classroom and students can use these resources to um, access or just help understand um, concepts in that specific subject. They will then choose the subject they want to enroll in. So you'll notice there are many books. So these books are to assist in um, people's ability to in learning to read. And then there is a variety of subjects. And these are typically major enrollment subjects. So a user would then pick the subject they want, they would pick the grade, and they would enroll in that specific grade and subject. And when they do, that subject would appear on their dashboard as a blue tile in the curriculum section. So these are shortcuts to specific subjects. So if I were to go to Mathematics Grade 12, as an example, what it does is it aligns the curriculum has been aligned in a week format, so each step represents one week. And learners can then access that specific or any specific step at any time in any order. And typically what is presented is a, is a page which provides the CAPS objectives, tells the, the outcomes of, what, of the CAPS objectives for the specific week and what resources they can watch in order to access it. So for instance, lesson one, sum to infinity, and this is a YouTube video which they can then access. Uh, in schools, where a school to keep have an offline copy of this content, um, what you would have here is a website would connect to the local repository of content, in which case they wouldn't be using the data to um, stream this video or YouTube. But here what there is, is basically what is in red are PDF documents, what is in blue are videos, and the purple are links, are web links. And there's a bunch, a bunch of uh, functionality available to, learn, to learners and teachers here, where they can rate and they can uh, take notes and, uh, and um, contribute content. Once a learner has been through all this content, they can then take a questionnaire and they start a questionnaire at this point. And once they've completed the questionnaire, they can go to revision and revision will then show them the results for that assessment. So if I take analyze grade 10, this assessment I did some time ago, it shows me that I got this question wrong. And I can show the question. Uh, and then is telling me to revise this content. And they're saying the concept that I need to understand is provided by this video, which if I click revise, will open a page of this video in, and that will explain to me how this question should be answered. So from a learning perspective, learners obviously, they're going to enroll in specific subjects first. So grade, all grade 12 learners will have enrolled in grade 12 subjects. And they then access the content, do the assessment, check the revision, and in the revision space they can see what, what, uh, where their weaknesses lie, and then they can, using progress results, go and see what their results are over, as they've trended over time. Learners can take the same assessments as many times as they want on the platform. The second cluster of content here is My Classroom, and this is only available to users who are registered as teachers. And teachers are registered as teachers within a specific organization. So if I were to go to my organization to explain this, I am registered as a teacher at Spencer Majiba, Majiba School. 
And there you can see I'm ticked as a mentor. So that is a school of which I teach. But I'm also an administrator in this after school program called Castle Bridge Music Development Academy, uh, where I'm an administrator and I am a mentor. So as a student, you could attend a specific school, but you could also be a member of an after school program such as ProTech or Vodacom School in the Cloud. Um, so you can be a member of multiple organizations. As an administrator and as a mentor, I can message the organization, which will, or as, a, as anybody who's a member can message the organization. So this is the simplest way to message the manager of that organization. And um, the purpose behind this is to, is to show that if I'm a teacher at a specific school, then what will happen is it will open up this my classroom section. And again, you choose which subjects you as a teacher teach, and these are the subjects that I as a teacher teach. If I take, uh, if I go to the music program that we run, which is um, the form in music, here I've said I'm mentoring Casterbridge, and because I've said I'm mentoring Casterbridge, I can see it in my Casterbridge classroom. I'm not mentoring music in either of these two organizations. And I'm mentoring all users who are enrolled in this subject in this organization. And that is how I can teach learners just in my, um, in my school. So if this was mathematics and this was Spencer Majiba, I would only be seeing learners in mathematics Spencer Majiba for that subject. So if I go to view classroom, these are the learners in my, in my classroom. And what I can now do as a teacher is I can analyze the results of and these are the formative assessments of, of all the modules within the subject. If I go to uh, pitch, for instance, I, it'll then draw me a graph and it'll show me where the, the students in my class are weak and where they are strong. So as a teacher, I could see immediately there's a weakness here, there's a weakness here. So I can begin to focus my efforts in the areas of weakness as opposed to focusing my, area, my efforts in, in areas where the students are um, highly competent. So there's a 93% average versus that question. There's no point in focusing on that question. Um, and then I can drill into these questions and um, this is the correct answer. Eight, eight of them answer that and I can show what the question is and I can then understand how to focus my teaching to those learners. So this is a very simple way, and obviously I'm sat at home at the moment doing this. Like a teacher, they can be sat at home and they can be analyzing what is going on in their classroom in this space. They can do other things such as set up uh, schedule events, so they could look on uh, students for an assessment, um, they can message the classroom, and they can then go in and they can message individual learners. I can send a message to an individual learner and I can begin to add uh, results of assessments which were taken offline. So for instance, if we had a formal test, which was a uh, handwritten test, I could then capture those results into the platform also. So that explains what the My Classrooms section of to enable is that is around teachers who are obviously teaching specific learners in specific subjects. The next step is is that teachers can then schedule and especially in, in the current times of lockdown they can schedule a live lesson which they can then teach to learners and this is fairly complex so I'm going to be looking at this from two perspectives. The first perspective is setting it up as a teacher. So this is actually where I create the schedule around a live lesson. So this, for instance, is uh, a, a live lesson which is due to start at 1 o'clock and will continue till 2 o'clock. And the time at the moment is uh, quarter past 1. So um, here I've set up a live lesson. It is. Uh, for physical science, it's just a, the name. It's for this organization, it's physical science grade 12. So any learner in this organization, which could be my school, 
for this learning for the for the learning area of physical science and grade 12, this will appear in their calendar. And it starts between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock on the 15th of May. All live streams are, have a URL. So a URL is just a web link. And they can basically be accessed in any browser. And this is the URL for the, for the live lesson that I'm going to provide. So in this example that I'm giving right now, I'm obviously busy recording this, so I'm not simultaneously giving a live lesson. I have given a live URL to what was a live lesson, which we ran once before. And um, so when I go to this as a user, you will, as a learner, you will, you will see what I'm linking to through this URL. And then there's a description here. What I can also then do is uh, set up questions, and I can add as many questions as I want, and there's several questions which are already set up on the, on the platform. So that's simply how I can add questionnaires uh, to my to my live session manager. So now, again, and I'm the teacher, I can go and view the live session that I have set up. And this questionnaire was live earlier, and it was live because I made it live. I ticked it. I can switch off this question. And I can switch on that question. And it's as simple as that to, to make a question live. And then I can see what the questionnaire is that I'm releasing to be live. And I can see the results of, of from students who've taken the assessment. So if I were to set this questionnaire as live, for instance, last night, and said to my students, please, will you go and do this online assessment? and they all then went online and took the assessment, I would see the results of that assessment in this graph. And I would then be able to teach two areas of weakness, as, uh, having used this tool to identify that. Now, to illustrate how this works, if I go to live assessments, now I'm looking at this from a learner perspective. Uh, there's a mathematics assessment which uh, is in a separate live event which was done before. This is the live assessment that is, I have currently just made live as a teacher and I can now go and take this assessment. And I'm not going to do any workings out, I'm just going to answer the assessment um, to illustrate how this works. So learners would obviously go online and take the assessment and this is quite a long assessment which is Seems 20 minutes is a bit short for it. And then once they've completed the assessment, they can submit the uh, submit the question. So they have successfully submitted the question there. So that's what my experience would be as a learner um, doing an assessment which my teacher has now released. If I return to the role of teacher and I were to go and view this, this um, live lesson, here is my uh, the questionnaire that I've released live and I can go and see what the results are and these are the results of those questions that I have just I have just done. So obviously these are the questions I guessed and these are the questions I got right and these are all the questions that I got wrong. But if my entire class takes this, I'll have many students having done hopefully this assessment correctly and what we'll have are identified areas of strength and identified areas of weakness and I can then as a teacher then teach to those areas of weakness. So I can again view the question and I can see where <coughs> which answers the students are giving. So that is the idea behind um, the management tool to manage a live broadcast. Okay, this is not actually the live broadcast, but this is what is informing the teacher about what they should include in the live lesson that they are about to give. Now, returning to the role of a student, what they would have is they would have upcoming events, and um, there was a mathematics. Uh, upcoming event earlier, which finished at 1300, which is um, 
um, I'm now going to go to this upcoming event, which was 1321, and I can view what the event is. I've already done the assessments because this view assessment link is the same as that. And I can open a live lesson, and this is the broadcast, which is taking place. So the teacher would then... And go and find it there. So here the teacher would be teaching, hopefully, to the analysis of what she has seen as a, as a consequence of, of the assessment she's released. So it's not essential uh, that she does. She can, she can just run a live lesson however she wants. But um, in this space, while the student is watching this video, and um, um, I'll turn the sound off, while I'm watching this video, which is a, a live stream of a lesson, I can send messages to the studio. So I can message the teacher while she is doing this lesson. So the teacher can be sat anywhere in the country doing this live lesson, and students can be sat remotely, and they can still interact. The reason it is a typed message rather than a spoken word is that this is a streamed lesson, and the teacher streams from her computer to a streaming server in the cloud, and that and students are accessing the stream from the, the server in the cloud. So there's a latency, there's about between a 10 second and 30 second delay. So it doesn't make sense to try and mix a vision, a video that you see uh, 30 seconds after it was actually said um, with somebody who can speak back into the studio. So it, in terms of live, it's not live as in this instant, there's a, it's, it's live as in a 30 second delay. So by allowing users to type messages to teachers or to the, to the broadcaster, allows the broadcaster still to pick up the messages and integrate it into the lesson that she's teaching there and then, although there will be a 30 second delay around it. So this is the learner's experience. Um, as you notice, when we set it up, it was a URL, which means that this can be opened in a browser in any page. So if I click on that, yeah, it has opened that lesson into a, a separate browser, because it is simply, this is an embedded URL. And um, from a learner perspective, what hopefully I'm seeing is a lesson which is based on information uh, as a result of the assessment that I took earlier. <coughs> so going back to the, to the main dashboard, there are three main sections. There's a section of delivering content to learners and teachers, and this is content which already exists, and it's aligned with the curriculum. The second is um, my classrooms, where teachers can access the results of learners in their class, having taken the assessments which are already aligned within this content. Um, and then they can message and schedule events with their learners. There's a bunch of management tools. And the third is to schedule a live lesson, especially in times of this current lockdown, where teachers can then schedule a live broadcast to the learners in their classroom. And they can actually, if they make it public, then broadcast to anybody on the platform who is registered for physical science grade 12, whatever the subject is and whatever the grade is. So if you want to break out from just your school, so if you're a really good teacher, or if you're running an after-school program, such as uh, ProTech on, on a Saturday uh, school, your organization will obviously be, be protect, but you would be willing to broadcast your lesson to the whole country. So anybody who on the platform is enrolled in physical science in grade 12 would then have access to your live broadcast um, and would have access to the assessments that you've set up. So, so those are the important parts of to enable and how to enable runs, and it's, and it's a very brief overview, but um, hopefully it's sufficient to... Um, allow you to see that this is a powerful tool for teaching and learning.